instructional technologist, graphic designer. I was living in Houston and I just wasn't really fulfilled in my inside. I was making good money, had education, everything. And I just came to Austin one time and I discovered how beautiful it was. My early visions of attending Barton Springs was uh, pretty blissful and pretty silent uh, because I was entering uh, a very, very sacred place. I mean, Barton Springs is the only springs in the metropolitan city so close to downtown so close to the city and everyone can get in there and take a little sip and go. And once I jumped in that water, I couldn't believe it. It was cold, but at the same time, I felt like I was refreshed. No matter what was in my mind, no matter what I was thinking about, completely dissipated immediately as soon as I jumped in, just like rebooting of my system. After a little while of living here, I, I, was, I was given this instrument called didgeridoo. It's a hollow log that termites eat the inside of and I discovered that it's a language to the land. So I went to Northern Territory, Arnhem Land, Australia, where this instrument didgeridoo is from. It was just like a sticky pollen to me and inviting me to go to the source that where it's from. You don't want people that like family for me. They're still so connected to the land. They have drawings, songs, dances, and they were opening my eyes and they planted seeds. They plant seeds, they're gardeners. Just so you can see how connected every person is to the land and how alive land is. <laughs> Instruments help you self-express whatever's inside. It's a way to paint the land with sound. The sound that comes out is like rainbows. It's amazing. Rhythmic rainbows coming out. And it's, it helps you connect, it's like a beatboxing, it's like a language, rhythmic language, to sing about the southeast wind, sing about the surface of the water, sing about the bubbles coming to the surface of Barton Springs, sing about the movement of the vegetation dancing slowly in the back, sing about the imagination of the water coming out of the eye in the very bottom of the springs. Anytime I played it, especially Barton Springs, people would come together like it's cold outside and there's fire. Everyone comes close like moths coming to the light. My Aboriginal sister was doing a painting. I'm like, oh, that's the big greenback turtle. What are the lines around that? Oh, that's the food for the turtle. I'm like, how do you know? Did you go snorkeling in there? How do you know? She says, we just know and we know the patterns, we paint them. So it struck my interest to do art. When I came back, I discovered that art is the language of, of nature. If you don't do art, it's the, the springs of the aquifers of your soul are kept damned. And the water that doesn't move goes stale. So the art is an invitation for everyone to let the springs flow out of them and gift it to everyone to drink from. Just by paying attention, closely, calmly, in, in absolute silence. One after another pattern was easily coming to me. I would jump in, jump out, do an art piece, immediately, small one. Jump in, jump out, do another piece, and let it sink in, soak in to me, you know, my imagination. And through the imaginative journey, you get to, the pages unfold for you, and you get to learn the language closer and closer. Plants, floral fauna, the water, you know, it has medicines. And so my art is the way to connect my art, music, dancing is the way I connect my heart and soul to the land. For me, the Springs, again, is the most valuable place I have ever been in my life. And it's why I live in Austin. If that Springs one day goes dry or polluted is the day that I'll have to leave.